the importance of experimenting coming up on today's video. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. I'm Justin Hebert, joined as always by Dr. Hugh Beatty. Thank you for tuning into another episode of Limitless Longevity. And Dr. Beatty, today we're talking experimenting. And it's this basic practice in science mm -hmm. of, hey, we're not sure we know what the answer mm -hmm. is. So let's design an experiment to see if we can deduce what it is. And if we're right, great. Can we reproduce it? Mm -hmm. And if we're not, then we take what we learned and adjust it and try a second experiment. And it works mm -hmm. great in science. And all I'm saying is, mm -hmm. I think it works well in our lives as well. Are you just talking about that big experiment that the whole world just went through? Oh, <laughs> I'm not supposed uh -oh. to say uh -oh. that. Okay. <laughs> all right, then. You're not talking about that. Not okay. that one. All right, good. Okay, <laughs> go ahead. We'll get kicked off YouTube for okay. that one. <laughs> Disclaimer. <laughs> all right, but, go ahead. So on the, on the business side of that, mm. really what it means is sometimes we put the pressure on ourselves or you know, business or life or whatever to say, oh, I have to get the answer right. Yes. I just don't think we have to all the – now, sometimes you know what the right answer is. Go mm -hmm. ahead and do it. But there are some times where we are mm -hmm. just stuck in a new situation, and my uh, advocacy in mm -hmm. those situations is then just try and experiment. Right. Well, I need to work out. Okay, well, experiment mm -hmm. for two weeks and see if it works better for you to wake up an hour earlier or stay mm -hmm. up an hour later. Yeah. I've been doing an experiment recently on Mexican food. Okay. I find I'm eating too much. Okay. <laughs> so you I like, it. like I like it, it, but I don't like, like what it. it's doing to okay. me. <laughs> All right. Go ahead. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but so in any area of life, then all, all I'm simply stating mm. for then is if, if you're not sure what that right answer is, experiment for, for a couple of weeks and see if you can get better. And if you solve the problem, great. You've made progress. And if you don't still know what the answer is, let's say at the end of a two week experiment, it's not that you failed, right. it's that you figured out a new direction. You can mm -hmm. still learn from that failure mm -hmm. and still create positive momentum. Yeah, that's, that's the scientific method. Yeah. You're supposed to experiment, document what your findings are, and you keep doing it. Like uh, Thomas Edison, how many times did he try things that didn't work? Yeah, a yeah. Thousand quote, yeah a thousand times or something like that? 10,000. Before whatever, the light worked? Before the light bulb worked. <laughs> okay. And so, so maybe my question to you mm -hmm. is why, do, why does science get mm -hmm. this? And right. Science does it very naturally, mm -hmm. but, but why outside of science do you feel like we maybe mm -hmm. struggle with implementing that in our own lives? Because people want the easy way out. They mm -hmm. don't want to experiment. Tell me what I need to do. In fact, this past week, um, I posted on Facebook, you know, what is the most important step? You know, is it imagining, communicating, managing, or implementing? And so many people, it was several people said, oh, implement. No, in order to implement, somebody had to first imagine. Yep. Okay, you and I imagine this channel, right? Yeah, absolutely. And then we had to do what? Communicate what we're imagining. Yeah. And then we had to try to figure out how we're going to get it going, which is the management step. And then we started implementing. Yeah. I think the implement is kind of the easier part. If the imagining. <laughs> yeah. Implementing is important, right? Yes. Like you, you can't get anywhere in life without implementing. Right. But that's the last step in the process. I think, I think you're pointing that. One of the shifts mm -hmm. that, I, that I have made – with people, and I'm noticing, mm -hmm. uh, not that I want to maybe overgeneralize, but I, I see it a lot in the younger generation. Weird that I'm not that anymore. <laughs> I'm getting older. It's okay. But but one of the things mm -hmm. that – let me say it this way. The, the, the shift that I have made in my practice very intentionally mm -hmm. yes. is – and I tell clients this explicitly several times. I'm not going to tell you what mm -hmm. to think. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try to train you how to think. Yes. Those are two very different things. Yes. Dr. Brady, if I tell you what to think, all I've done is make a clone of myself and yes. you're going to carry around the same biases and blind spots mm -hmm. and personality mm -hmm. and, and character traits. And I don't mm -hmm. think the world needs two of me. The world needs one of me, yes. but it doesn't need two of me. What it needs is a Dr. Brady. And so mm -hmm. I don't need to train you what to think. I need mm -hmm. to teach you how to think because then you can take your own perspectives and skill set and apply it in the world. Yeah, and that's the beauty of college. When I first went to college back in 77, I went to Occidental College, and that's what they told us. You are here to learn how to think. Yeah. We're not here to teach you what to think. I think there's a, a, a sea shift in that. I think when you go to college now, you're indoctrinated. They're, they're this is what, what you think. need to yeah, think. Absolutely. you yeah. got to be woke, okay? And so, uh, But when I was in school, especially in medical school, they taught us how to think. Yes. Yeah. And so I've applied that always. Yeah. Yeah. And and I think, as you, again, and you grew up in a, in a school mm -hmm. there and learned to apply your craft. Mm -hmm. 
with someplace that valued and understood the scientific method. Oh, yes. Definitely. We just we, we don't translate mm-hmm. that into the rest of life. Right. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, when I go in and consult with businesses, and we're talking about marketing or leadership development or any of those sorts of things. It's mm-hmm. like, well, let's try an experiment. <laughs> right. Here's the beauty of online digital marketing mm-hmm. today. Let's try this mm-hmm. this post for two weeks so we can mm-hmm. c- collect some data and we'll know what right. works. And if this works well, let's keep doing it. Congratulations. Yes. You succeeded your first time. Mm-hmm. And if it doesn't succeed the way you mm-hmm. want it, then we adapt it. Mm-hmm. We can apply that in the scientific method. We can mm-hmm. apply that in digital marketing. You can also apply it in your own life. Dr. Beta, you have mm-hmm. clients who need to learn how to eat healthy. Well, mm-hmm. try paleo. Well, That's I right. really struggle because, well, mm-hmm. great. Then it's not pure paleo. So maybe mm-hmm. we can do this. Right. We can make these adaptations. But those mm-hmm. become little many experiments that help us improve towards our end destination. I totally agree. But the two biggest issues that keep people from doing that is that there's a cost to doing that. Mm-hmm. They don't always want to pay a cost. Who's going to pay for the experiments? Yeah. And then who's going to do the work? And who's going to do the recording? And so for you and me, you know, we're set up that way. Yeah. Our mindset is that, hey, I want to do something new. I don't know how I need to do it, but let's go ahead and put in the time. Let's invest and do it. But they don't understand long term. There's a great reward for experimenting. Yeah. Yep. Somebody had the imagination to say, "Let's try this." Yes. And those are the ones that succeed greatly in life. Yeah, th- those are the ones that attract wealth and abundance and happiness yes. and prosperity and longevity and really mm-hmm. all the things that we advocate for on this channel and all the things we encourage our viewers to do. It happens. Yes, yes you might see the fruits mm-hmm. of that endeavor in the implementation phase, right. <laughs> but it can't happen without the imagination phase. Yes, the imagination phase is so critical. So since I learned that recently, I'm trying to imagine other things. And what I'm saying, I say, okay, hold that, slow down a little bit, hold your horses, because guess what? The more things you imagine, the more things you have to do what? Eventually <laughs> implement. Eventually okay. implement. That's, that's yeah. 100% true. And so our <laughs> encouragement for you today is to, yes, implement. You've seen us talk about that on mm-hmm. on many of our videos before implementation is important but beyond that maybe behind that is this idea of imagination are you Mm -hmm. committed to doing the imaginative work to committing to learn a new way to think how to think not just what to think you already know what to think you know you should eat healthy you know you should get to bed on time you know you should lift weights but that doesn't mean you know how to think about those things and ways to retrain your brain you know that you should practice good financial stewardship so that you can pass on wealth and legacy to your kids. But that doesn't mean you know how to think about money. So all of these things that we encourage you to do, don't just figure out the what and jump to that. You've got to figure out that how. That way you will know for certain that you know how to think, not what to think. Ultimately, it leads you on that journey towards ultimate success. This is Dr. Beatty. I'm Justin Ebert. Thanks for joining us, and we will see you on a future video. when it comes to growth opportunities. Recently, I was meeting with a prospective client and we had provided him with a business audit and laid out what our plan would be to help bring some new invigorated growth to his company, the the services that we could provide and how they would help him. And after we laid out all of that and the pricing information, he goes, well, this is great and I think we can do it. And if we can't, then I know exactly what goal to aim for. His instant thought was, I can make this happen. Sometimes when we are presented with growth, we don't always have that thought. And we think of of the fear or the chance of failure, and we try to talk ourselves out of it. But let me encourage you and challenge you to say that ultimately your attitude, your response determines your destination. So if you want to get where you say you want to go, then practice saying, I can figure it out because that will help you get there quicker than listening to your fears.